CES 2019, so many things to look forward to. Alienware's M15 gaming laptop, Shannon's got a review. Do we use smart locks? And let's talk about bear tracks or mountain lion tracks. It's all coming up on Tech Thing. Thank you patrons, without your support via patreon.com slash tech thing, we wouldn't be able to make the show for you each and every week. Join the crew that makes Tech Thing possible at patreon.com slash tech thing. Thanks. I'm Shannon Morris. And I'm Patty Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we have something useful in every single show. This week, however, is mostly about speculation. speculation. And gaming. Speculation. Yes, and, and gaming. <laughs> and smart locks, which I find neither smart nor locky. <laughs> but we'll discuss that. Well, they lock. That's I, true. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so there are going to be, as you, something we've gotten used to, right? Mm -hmm. The festival, the, the, the cavalcade, the parade, the flood of laptops, uh, and, and actually gaming desktops and laptops. Lots of laptops, lots of gaming desktops, lots of gaming laptops will be announced at CES 2019. We know the names of many of them. Yes. Upwards of 18, I think, at this 18. point. 18? Is well, it really 18 already? I think so. It's tough. It's a lot. There, in any case, lots of stuff to carry in your bag, do your work on, get creative with, play games on, coming from CES 2019. Um, I anticipate 5G updates. Kind of curious to see what Qualcomm yeah. has to say uh, at their press event on Monday next week. Mm, um, that'll be good. Here's hopefully. the... Th yeah, I've been doing a lot of 5G research because there's this giant... Um, oh, sorry, I was about to do a really peculiar... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Monty Python reference. Oh, reference. Uh, Huge tracks of, of wireless. Yes, um, <laughs> I know. I know the reference that you are referring to. And it's just rude. Oh, Monty Python. You know they're rude. <laughs> I love them. Uh, I'm watching my kids laugh at Monty Python skits. The Ministry of Funny Walks. Oh my gosh. They haven't seen the the tracks of. So anyway, one. CES. So, so yeah. So five G. Well, it's crazy, right? Because five G is basically it's like it's going to make your cat happier. It's going to yeah. make things faster. It's going to do this. It's it's, it's this incredibly complex mix of multiple technologies working in a lot of interesting ways and a lot of frequencies we've never really, in any case, 5G is probably a 2020 thing unless A, uh, you are in the right city and B, you're really into early adoption and paying higher prices for hardware. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm excited, but it's one of those things where it's gonna be like. It takes a while. Yeah. You know what else takes a while? New Wi-Fi Wireless. standards. Wireless. Oh yep. my goodness. New Wi-Fi standards. I've talked to several um, home networking vendors so far. Mm -hmm. I am not filled with hope that we will see a lot of 802.11ax uh, slash Wi-Fi 6. I'm not I, that surprised. I do plan on asking everyone if they're going to call it 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6. Oh, should we do a poll? No. <laughs> <laughs> ask everyone, what do you think it should be? You know, because then they're, it's, it's, uh, nobody wants we to be. We can start a war. It'll well, be like Blu-rays versus what was the other one? Well, that's <laughs> too soon. <laughs> HD DVD should have won. Or Wi-Fi six. Blu-ray run that with a giant. Yeah. Yeah, Robert and I can talk about that for hours. In any case, <laughs> um, I always love an AX or Wi-Fi six is really fascinating, right? We talked about it earlier this year. More efficient spectrum utilization. Um, ODMFA, basically. Uh, there's just a lot of really cool stuff going on if yeah. you have you know, a compatible networking device and a compatible card in your laptop or your desktop. It'll be able to combine 2.4 and 5, yeah. which is really cool. And the idea is that more people can use the network more efficiently at the same time. Yes. I am excited about that. Not that Me I too. really use the Wi-Fi at football stadiums, but that seems to be the one that's mentioned <laughs> like every eight minutes. Yay. Um, AMD. Rumors are flooding, uh, mm -hmm. especially thanks to this crazy uh, e dash catalog dot ru Whoa. webpage, uh, which might or might not be the next uh, Ryzen <gasps> nine, the Ryzen Ooh. three thousand CPUs. Um, we'll see. Yes. Sixteen cores, yes, thirty two threads, uh, possibly a die shrink. Lots and lots and lots of rumors floating around AMD. <laughs> That's at exciting. CES. Well, and of course, they've got their next generation card coming yeah. out. It may or not, may not support rendering or yep. assume, uh, ray tracing. Um, TVs smells like an incremental year for, for TVs. Oh, really? uh, projectors, okay. good year for 4K projectors, I think. Mm, or 4K projectors. projectors that aren't the cost of an incredibly uh, a, a nice sedan. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's nice. Not that I, not that there's anything wrong I'm with an eighty thousand dollar projector, those. but I'm not selling both my kidneys and my children so I can have 4K in the living room. It's a very good point. Oh my goodness, uh, Nvidia RTX 2600 leaks have started. <gasps> Ooh, there's yes. leaks. <gasps> Possibly. Oh, there it is. This could be the founder's edition oh. of the 2600, oh. which is apparently going to be the same price as the regular one. So 2060. Yeah, and Ooh. this is a big one. Video cards with a Z.com says January 7th for the announcements. In stores January 15th. 1920 CUDA cores, 240 tensor cores, 30 ray tracing cores, and 6 gigs of GDDR6 memory. $349 with wow. Battlefield 5 or Anthem for free. Dude. The general That's a great summary. Price. Yeah, it is a, a it's a fantastic price. Um, think 1070 Ti performance for 1080p or 1440p Ooh, gaming. Yeah, that's so nice. We'll know Sunday night. Oh, that's exciting. Late well, Sunday night. <laughs> I am definitely looking forward to seeing what happens in the laptop space, especially mm -hmm. with the gaming laptops too. Yeah. Because uh, apparently, as you mentioned. CEO NVIDIA Jensen Huang is going to be giving a keynote or giving a press event, I guess I should say, while they're at CES. Um, NVIDIA is doing a press event. I will probably be working it, doing their live stream. Oh, nice. Most likely. Um, I'm, although saying that I know as much as y'all do out there, I haven't heard a thing. They keep it very, very close knit. So I'm predicting maybe laptop grade RTX cards. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like that would be the time, given that they just announced the RTX 2080 GPUs mm -hmm. back in August. So hopefully we'll see something like laptop friendly with that. I want to. We'll see. But I'm also hoping that we will see a trend of updated RTX GPUs in the gaming laptops. Right. Uh, that would just be so killer, as well as the ones for desktop for a cheaper margin. So hopefully all of those leaks that you're seeing are true, because that well, would be awesome. Yeah, the twenty. I mean, $350, 2060 would be fantastic. It would be nice to see some, maybe a die shrink or something that bumps yeah. the cost on the 2070 or the 2080 down. A lot of people are saying it's not going to happen until the inventory runs out. Hey. Ask us Sunday around midnight because hey. Jensen's keynotes <laughs> tend to run a little long. They do. <laughs> That's okay. They're good, though. <laughs> I would also love to see some updated VR. That's actually consumer friendly because last year the big deal at CES was the HTC Vive mm -hmm. Pro. But that thing is so outrageously priced just for the headset, it's $800. So I would like to see some sub 500 updated high resolution and fast tracking VR headsets that are compatible with like whatever I already own. That would be very, very nice. And you know, I was so excited about the HTC Vive Pro last year and then I found out it was 800 bucks just for the headset and I was just like, okay, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. We, you know, we talked about how the Oculus, I mean, I think it was like last week, we talked about how the Oculus Go is now for content consumption. Yes. And yeah. they kind of disappeared the next gen <laughs> stand. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I want to yeah. play games. Well, where's Some the Oculus? 500. Just give me that price margin with that high resolution. Come on. You get excited about I that. Do. Oh, here I, it is. I just like VR. If you dig, you can find the Oculus Quest, which is supposed to come out in spring of this year, which is their, you know, no PC, no wires, no limits. Ooh, I don't I think we'll see any this. announcements on that at CES. Well, it should be better than a Go, yeah. but less than a Rift. Right. Um, but a lot of people are saying this is we'll the next see. big thing. Um, Vive doesn't seem to have anything cooking right now. Yeah, I know. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. It's interesting. Hmm, no rumors <laughs> yet. We'll, we'll keep on looking, though, especially because I'm very yeah. interested in VR. Mm. And also, okay. 3D printing, too. We'll see. Are you into 3D printing? I, I, I have two I like 3D, 3D printers 3D in my house. We're 3D printing planes for the boys. My biggest <laughs> issue is, is, is 3D printing at CES was like, you'll be able to manufacture everything in your house, <laughs> which didn't really work out because the printers were expensive and, yep. and people like they get it home and the model's like, oh, I have to sand for three hours uh, and then I paint it. Uh, and then and then the CES went from like a pavilion to like 24 vendors scattered around <laughs> the South Hall. So true. Well. Yeah, I would agree with you. Over the past few years of CES, I've seen the companies. Mm -hmm. It seems like the 3D printing companies have matured quite a bit with mm -hmm. their audience. As in, like at first, 3D printing sections were built in to, to wow the newcomers right. so that anybody that walked into Look, the South we're Hall would be like, your this place. is amazing. Oh my yeah. gosh, I want to get a 3D printer. Remember the 3D face scanner that Yay! never shipped? Yes. And then there was <laughs> the 3D shipped. printed food, which... Somebody's printing with But it's somewhere. crazy expensive. So now they're selling to like educated 3D printing mm -hmm. users. I worry that this isn't broad enough for folks who are still new to 3D printing and will it'll make them lose interest. I think so it's become more of a hobby thing though. 
Because it, it's still, kind of. even with a really good 3D printer, it still requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of work. It requires you to be very educated as a user. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see companies at CES focus again, <laughs> like they did when they originally came to CES, on helping people understand the technology, mm -hmm. rather than just selling to like B2B, business to business, right. or business to the educated already in your market users. Because eventually you're going to limit yourself on the marketable people that you can sell to. Make it easier, make it user friendly because so far I haven't seen that and we need that. We need that in the 3D printing market. Remember the Mattel printer? Did the Mattel printer ever <laughs> ship? I remember that one, yeah. I don't know if it ever shipped. That's the thing. Oh wait, <laughs> there it is. Did it ship? Is it selling? Well, is there's- Is that the only one? No, this was the- Oh, that's the, oh. That's oh, it just got pushed, okay, this was back oh, in 2016 and it got pushed back into another year, two years ago. Um, Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll check. Yeah. We'll see if it actually got released. You were thinking about foldable displays. Yes. Oh, foldable <laughs> displays. Yeah. So we have seen like inklings of these becoming a reality from TV manufacturers and smartphone manufacturers this year. So let's see this actually happen in action on the show floor. Not just like hiding in a suite with right. your favorite press people. Like actually let's see this in action like let me be able to touch it and be able to fold it myself give me the ability to see and touch this technology in real life because right now it's just like meh oh that's cute you're doing <laughs> foldable displays that's nice oh you only have one working prototype cool good for you it's early yes it's so early so i want to see foldable displays actually happen because that would be so cool do you, do you want to scroll your 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 screen out or do you no, want to have you know just what i want i want I want a, a, a computer like this, a nice big laptop that I can edit on, but I want it to be able to do a foldable display that turns it into a trio of displays or dual like display. Like one giant 21 by nine yes, screen? Yes, and not like that thing that Razer was showing off like two years ago Where because that thing was 15 month. pounds. It was ridiculous. I want to see something that weighs five pounds and also has a foldable display that just comes out like a little heads up display or something. I, that would be so cool, but it's not available yet. I think it's going to be a long wait. It is. But we can dream. <laughs> I'm like Battlestar Galactica up in here. Star Trek. <laughs> well, we, it's also kind of funny how every couple of years the foldable display, you know, it rolls it like up. Comes it back. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what like. 3D goggles were for Let's see years. it happen. But yeah, it, that's going to be my like far-reaching prediction. <laughs> I did a search for 3D printer on Mattel.com. Okay. And I'm, I'm not coming up with a lot. Oh. So Ain't I'm, nothing there. I'm thinking it never okay. actually shipped. We'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. <laughs> but there's lots of curious. 3D printed Mattel cars. Ooh, <laughs> cute. I'm just not seeing in any case. <laughs> well, let us know what you are curious about seeing over at CES yeah. and what your predictions are for next week. And thanks to everybody who's already sent in an email to ask at techthing.com. We are going to do our best to keep track yeah. of what you've asked us to look for. Alienware sent out the review units of their 2018 Alienware M15 right here in December. So I got my hands on one before the holidays. I actually received a different one in the mail, but when I tried to reset it, it got into this crazy boot loop <laughs> issue while reinstalling Windows, so that was fun. And here's the thing, I always reinstall Windows on my review units so that I'm not returning it with like passwords and things mm -hmm. on it. My, none of my personal information gets returned to the press people. But you basically went to boot it and it just died. It just, yeah, it just died. So I had to return it for this new one that you see in front of me. Uh, this new one works fine. So I am hoping that that was just a fluke that I was experiencing because this one's great and I have had zero problems. So now that I have had a chance to play some games on one once I got the new one in, I just, I'm laughing because like the keyboard is slowly cycling yeah, through dude, colors. I got a rainbow going on. It's great. <laughs> so I'm able to play games. games on it. I can play games. I can edit on it and just generally use it like a normal person. I got to say that I am finally, this is a big deal. I am retiring my razor blade, which I have had multiple problems with over the past two years since I purchased it. The fans ga gave out on me. The clicker, the trackpad eventually died and it cracked. That was my fault. And the new one that I've been using for the past two years, right. that one, the left and click have started dying and they aren't uh, working as well as they should be. They, sh they aren't accurate. I, I have to say, as somebody who has 
sort of vicariously lived through your Razer laptop fail experience <laughs> because the first two trackpads that failed, I don't think were your fault because right. they just took them right back in and RMA made out fresh ones. That's um, true, they did. I'm not particularly surprised that now that you have a, a faster, newer laptop that doesn't seem to be exploding on contact with humanity that you would move on to it. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> so I'm finally retiring it and I'm very excited to be using this one. And the reason being is that this was sent to me from the Alienware Hive influencer folks. So okay. I'm an Alienware influencer. Uh, and it's going to be my new laptop because they, they gifted it to me basically. Okay. Uh, which is very exciting. So thank you so much, Alienware. So the Alienware M15, which you can see over on the Dell website, it starts at $1379.99 for an NVIDIA GeForce. Uh, and that one's a GTX 1060, a full HD screen, and 8 gigs of RAM. And then from there, it increases all the way up to, I got Wait the last it. one on the second page. There you go. $39.49.99. Whoo! And that model has 32 gigs of RAM, 1070, and a UHD screen. That would be nice for video editing. That would be. Yeah, absolutely. Now, It's also almost as much as I paid for my truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So mine's right in the middle. Um, it's currently on sale, which is pretty nice. It's $18.99.99 right here with an 8th gen Intel Core i7-8750H. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, which is two PCIe M.2 512 gig SSDs, nice. and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 with Max-Q design. I'll go to my desktop so you can see a pretty photo here. The, <laughs> this one is a full HD 144 hertz screen, so it's full HD and it's quite quick whenever you're Are, are we watching games. a static image on your 144 hertz screen? I will play some Are you scrolling the mouse? <laughs> I will play some B-roll for you. I'll play some video games on it. I'll show you what it looks like. So um, yeah, to, to put it bluntly, it is very, very pretty. 144 like high, high refresh rate monitors on laptops are fascinating it's, game on. It's awesome. It's nice. <laughs> it's awesome. So the Alienware M15 is a 15.6 inch laptop that comes in Nebula Red, as I have here in Epic Silver. And I realize that this pink clashes with the red. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> it features that Alienware branding on the back, on the cover, as well as the power button on the front, which is very cute. It's hugely different from the previous laptop models, which were a lot bulkier. Like, I can hold this one in one hand and not feel tired. And it didn't fit in my creator's backpack, which was a uh, Peak Design backpack. So that was kind of a problem. I couldn't really take it with me anywhere that I went if I was using that backpack, which kind of stunk. Now this one does, it does fit in the backpack, which is lovely, and that's with more screen real estate and less weight, so that's definitely an upgrade for me. It weighs 4.78 pounds, it's 10.8 inches by 14.3, and it's thinner at 0.83 inches and 0.70 inches when you close it, because one side is a little bit wider than the other one, so keep that in mind. Uh, there is a nice soft touch coating on the inside around the keyboard, and it's built with magnesium alloy and copper all around, so it's light, but it also manages the thermals really well, uh, which I appreciated because, you know, I don't like having something burn my lap when I'm using it at home. <laughs> Very important. It doesn't feel plasticky at all, and that soft coating on the front of it or on the top of it near the keyboard kind of gives it some warmth when I'm, so I'm not like freezing in the middle of the winter time whenever I touch the thing, uh, which is good. I appreciate that. It keeps a nice, n a nice comfortable warmth. It's not hot. It's just like, oh, nice. I'm touching a piece of machinery. Cool. Uh, they've also built in their Cryotech 2.0 tech to keep it cool during high performance gaming or work. Now, when I was playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the fans did run loud, mm -hmm. but not as loud as my older Razer blade. So it didn't sound like it was a jet engine about to take off, which is nice. <laughs> For most of the time, though, it runs pretty silent, uh, like it's currently running here in the studio, with the fan upticks here and there during editing or video gaming or higher processing. So the cryotech is the combination of the fans and the cooler? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And it uses very precise fans on the inside. I forget exactly how many blades and everything that goes on Lots. in there. Lots of, <laughs> yeah. Lots of technology is happening inside this thing to keep it cool. You can also control the thermals and the power management through the Alienware Control Center software, which is built in, so you don't have to download that. The screen is 1920 by 1080 on here. You can get that UHD screen. It's a 3840 by 2160 resolution if you want. Uh, the Full HD ones do come in a couple of different options. Mine is the 144 hertz. There's also a 60 hertz, uh, with mine being 144 hertz. 
Uh, I was playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I was hitting 60 FPS during gameplay on the default configurations. So that's not lowering anything, and that's with the 1070 in here. Uh, the screen is 300 nits brightness. It's really pretty, and it's 72% color gamut. It, it's beautiful. I really appreciated the screen, and I liked working with it, especially during like the editing and you know Photoshop, doing a lot of Lightroom editing and things like that. So I'm very happy with the colors on this thing. I tested the config with 3D Mark's Fire Strike as well, and I got a score of 13,495. I also tested the same thing on my previous blade, which again is two years old, and that one runs at 1060. That one is 9304. So definitely. Well, that was it like a going from there. a 1060 to a 1070. 1060 to 1070. Which is a healthy performance bump. Health, yes, yeah. very healthy. Uh, so it is a stark contrast. It gives you a great example of what you can get just from going from one GPU to another. You will notice that the bezels are a lot smaller on this one, especially around the screen, which helps keep it smaller. But the screen is bigger than previously, so they've gotten rid of the bezels, but they haven't increased the size of the actual computer. And there is also a camera up top. I know you'll appreciate that, Patrick. It's full HD, which is also very nice. Much nicer than nose cam. <laughs> yeah, it's much nicer <laughs> than nose cam. Uh, the keyboard itself, it's a 1.4 millimeter wow. travel time. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. It has four zones of full RGB color, so it's not customized per key, mm -hmm. uh, which is a shame, but you can do per zone, and you can do like the rainbow wave through it, but you can tell whenever you do that, that it has four <laughs> different zones. These, along with the Alienware heads on the front and the back, can all be customized in the software. I have different themes set up per game, so in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it lights up just red all mm -hmm. over, because I was like, cool, explosions are red. I will make it all red and yellow themed. So I have a theme for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's really cool. And then my system theme is rainbow, because, you know, I like rainbows. Uh, the branding and the LEDs can also be disabled, so if you're not like me and you don't like to show off the alien head on the front, you can disable that and stick a sticker on it if you want to. Doesn't matter to me. And the keyboard is nicely spaced, too. It's quieter than my blade, and it has a number pad, which is the coolest thing ever, because it's the first time that Alienware has done a sub-17 inch size laptop and included the number pad. I'm overjoyed about this. I used to work in a bank, so I always use the number pad. It's my thing. I love it. So thank you for that. Thank you. I love you. It's got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, two speakers are built in. They sound very clear. I was impressed by the speakers. They're very, very nice. Nice upgrade from my previous laptop. And they are both uh, on the sides, so they fire outwards. And there's tons of ports, which are also built in. On one side, you have a Noble Lock. There's a full gigabit switch. Uh, there's USB 3.1 Type A with PowerShare. There's a headphone jack, and then there's two more 3.1 Type A's. So lots of ports. Yeah, and then you got a full HDMI 2.0, mini Display Port, USB C with Thunderbolt, and then the Alienware graphics amplifier that lets lets you stick in your desktop GPU if you wanted to, AMD or NVIDIA, and then you can play with a desktop GPU on the side. But nice. you have to buy their Alienware. Uh, box, case, their toaster. Box for that. Their <laughs> toaster, and then stick in your own GPU. So that's more expensive. And then the power port, of course. And the power brick is huge. Go figure. Not surprised there. <laughs> as far as the power goes, though, it's a 60 watt hour battery. There's also an optional 90 watt oh, hour wow. battery. Yeah, it's big. I have the 60 watt hour. It lasts about 7.1 hours on video pl playback. Which is pretty good for a workhorse. It'll last me well, the for a gaming work laptop. A workhorse, yes, a gaming laptop. Seven point one hours is pretty good for that. Um, if it could do anything more than that, that would be amazing. But is that, I'm so happy is with seven point one with the ninety watt hour battery or the sixty? 60? Okay. Yep, that's with the sixty. Um, I would love to try it with a ninety watt hour. Mm -hmm. I think that would be epic. That would be amazing. I could use it on like an international flight. Oh, oh beautiful. Oh <laughs> so, do I like it? Heck yes, I do. Uh, the upgrade from the 1060 to the 1070 coupled with the bigger screen with better refresh rates is very appealing to me. And I love, 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 love that it's not as bulky as the previous model because I just could not use that one for all of my going to conventions and everything. It was just well, not It as was portable. a very underpowered desktop. Yeah. Or a laptop you couldn't actually carry anywhere. Yeah, so, so <laughs> this was like the design that Alienware finally created because I barked at them so long. And I, it wasn't because of me, but I wish it was. Uh, but yeah, we I think we, Total, uh, all the peoples. All of the gaming laptop buyers. Said, it needs to be smaller, guys. 
but make us give us a bigger screen. It's like we want the best of both worlds. And I think we got it in this laptop. It's a very good one. And since I'm going to be using it over the next year, I will be letting you know if I run into any complications or anything with it. But so far, so good. Hopefully the trackpad doesn't die in the first <laughs> couple months. I, I feel like I'll have a little more luck. Hopefully the trackpad doesn't die. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions about this laptop in, or in general, or if you have any gaming laptop questions that you want me to cover on other machines too. I'm always trying to get them in for a review because I like doing the comparisons. They're super fun. Email ask at techthing.com or you can tweet me at snubs. We love your questions, your tips, and your suggestions of products and ideas to check out. Please tweet at TechThing at Snubs or at Patrick Norton. Or hey, you can always email ask at TechThing.com. And a big shout out to our patrons at Patreon.com slash TechThing. You pay the bills, you feed my family, you make the show possible. Our thanks to you. Join the crew that makes TechThing possible at Patreon.com slash TechThing. And hey, thank you so much for supporting the show, no matter how you do it. We got a tweet from Dev Noel Droid, who said, have y'all ever done any episodes on smart locks? I can't recall and was thinking about a Nest Yale. Want something that works with Google Home? Thanks and keep up the amazing work. We will, and thank you so much for tweeting us. We appreciate it. Oh my goodness, so August, uh, here, here we go. If you go to august.com, August uh, smart lock, uh, their Smart Lock Pro, they've been compatible with Google Assistant and Amazon's ALEXA for quite a while. And then they also have door sense sensors that let you know if the door is opened or closed. That's kind of important. Ooh. You'll understand why in a couple minutes. And you'll also need the August Connect Wi-Fi bridge, uh, assuming the website with all the installation information on august.com is up to date. That, uh, that box is 79 bucks from August website or it's uh, $8 oh. uh, over the regular Smart Lock Pro price of $208 on Amazon. So this okay. is one of those things, or well, it was 208 earlier, now it's 207. <laughs> Apparently they know I'm looking and they're oh, dropping the difference. price down. <laughs> so if you're looking at the Nest by Yale or the Nest X Yale mm -hmm. uh, lock with Nest Connect, you're talking about, uh, you know, let's call it $279, but wow. shipping's free. Now the Nest Yale lock uses Nest Weave, not Wi-Fi to connect to your home network, which is kind of actually like the August lock, except it's different because different company. So you'll need either a $69 Nest Connect or the Nest Guard, uh, their alarm system to use the Nest Yale lock with Google Assistant. And it's just, it is what it is. Look, there's the... Oh, it's a white box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's another thing to plug into an outlet in your home. Um, it's always kind of funny to hear what you can or can't do with some of the, the Internet of Things or smart lock devices. My personal favorite at this point, you can't unlock your door using voice commands, which is actually oh, a safety precaution. Yeah. Right, so you know somebody can't unlock your door with their voice. Yeah. Uh, but you also can't make sure your door is actually closed if you tell the Google Assistant to lock your door. Oh, so they're reminding you. Well, yeah. So it turns. That's why they have a door sensor on for the August lock, so that you can actually know, oh. right? Because you can turn the deadbolt, but the door can be loose. Yep. <laughs> if you have kids, this may make more sense to you than if you don't. Yeah. Um, but that's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, neither of us have, or probably will have, any kind of of wired or wireless connected lock on our home. Um, the trouble with working uh, next to <laughs> security professionals, hackers, and pen testers is you get really paranoid about connecting yep. things to a network <laughs> that gives people total access to, say, your home. Yep. Paranoid? Probably. And I, I gotta say, when you look at the reviews of these, people love their smart locks, oh, right? Yeah, because you, you can assign different, uh, you know, key codes, you know, for different people. You can track who's in or out. You can tell if somebody came in. It is really cool. Yeah, you can, you know, remotely unlock things in a lot of cases. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this. Yeah. I am just so profoundly paranoid because of the people I work alongside of. Yep. I'm a little uptight about having something that is connected, even indirectly. You know, because it's like it's their proprietary network, then you get to the router, then you get to the internet. Yeah. So there's there's <laughs> lots of layers. There's many steps, but what if somebody is like war walking and you have a smart lock? Yeah. I mean, I, that's a very, very minimal. Um, uh, entry point, like you're likely to never get attacked in that way by somebody war yeah. walking, but I might be because I do a show on the internet, so I or don't have a smart lock. <laughs> as certain people found out with certain cars, it may turn out that something is particularly accessible, then yeah. somebody just, you know, walks down the street and clicks a, you know, the, the modern day equivalent of a blue box or a black box, let's call it a yellow box. Yeah. 
<laughs> because you'll piss yourself when you find out the front door is open when you get home. A yellow box. Well, right, but you know, I it's mean, it's a thing though. That's totally a thing. Everything's secure until it's not. That was like yep. the rule of. 2018, 2017, 2016, mm -hmm. 2015, 2014, 2013, 2012, 2011, 2010. You get the idea. <laughs> well, I will <laughs> say, though, that I am more than happy to review smart locks. Mm -hmm. I think they're very cool technology for most people. Um, not me personally, but right. I think they're fine for most people. They seem to be incredibly secure. The companies yeah. have a lot to lose if it doesn't work out. Yep. And some of the biggest lock manufacturers and some pretty hefty play. I mean, Nest is a pretty big company at this point. Yes, they are. Um, and I think they're doing serious engineering. We're just both, but yeah, we have tinfoil on our heads right now. <laughs> Let us know what you think of smart locks or if you have another option that you would like to share with our fans and our viewers out there. Uh, let us know. We'd be happy to include it on a future episode. Real quick, I want to thank Hack5 over at HAK5.org for the studio space. You can check out all of the shows that I do with Darren Kitchen over at hak5.org. Tons of security and privacy podcasts. And also, don't forget to check out hack5.org slash gear because there's big sales happening right now. I realize the holidays are over, but you can still get some pretty awesome discounts. So definitely check out the things over there. Head over to hack5.org slash gear and see for yourself. And by the way, youtube.com slash hack5, we have a new episode of Hack5 up, which I'm super excited about. Darren is taking the lead on Hack5 right now, and he's got a brand new episode up, so definitely check it out and subscribe if you haven't already. And we thank Hack5 for their support of Tech Thing. <laughs> we do. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, once in a while, oh, don't forget, yeah. see yes next week, which is oh. pretty much the opposite of what I'm thinking of right here. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> CES is not analog at all. <laughs> well, it's very analog. Where you do have to walk around a lot. <laughs> where is the food? It's great exercise. Will I ever breathe clean air again? <laughs> yeah. What day is Yay, it? Vegas casinos. Have you seen sunlight in three days? <laughs> we were talking about doing something analog. Close yes. the laptop and do something analog, like go snowshoeing up in Yosemite. <gasps> and this is not uh, snowshoeing up in Yosemite, but somewhere in here is my children, and this is, of Aww. course... Well, that's Yosemite. That's beautiful. Yes, and <gasps> this is probably a bear track, although mm. it might be a mountain lion track. Ooh. And there's another shot of that. You can barely see these. These appear to be rabbit tracks. Oh. If you are uh, going to correct me on this, feel free to email askatechthing.com. I thought it was a raccoon, but maybe not. I think the paws are small for raccoons. Oh, and there's okay. lots of ice all over Yosemite Ooh, right now. Cool. Top of Bridal Veil Falls, and this is up north of the Bridal Veil Falls view from the tunnel. But, uh, Dude, that is gorgeous. I also just want to say big props to the park rangers that were trying to keep a really messy situation from boiling over. Uh, in case you weren't aware, government's been shut down. Most of the facilities, uh, the maintenance, the toilet, this is all like, yep. it's, uh, the two or three rangers, I guess we spoke to three rangers. They were polite, they were organized, they were helpful, uh, despite the fact they were dealing with a much larger than usual rush of folks into the park because no fees. There were rangers there? Yes. Wow. Well, not the... Volunteering. No. No, they were working without getting paid. Oh. These are sort of the, the ranger sort of police. Okay. Um, I apologize if I have borked on the particular type of ranger. But no, the gates were open. There was yeah. no one manning the gates. There were no other... Like, like usually you they see kept, rangers yeah, all over the place. Yeah, they kept it open for free so people could still come in. There were like 24... Uh, my understanding is there were 24 rangers to cover all of Yosemite uh, and Camp Mather. Whoa. Uh, with traffic levels that were equivalent to July 4th. So they had Whoa. an area the size of Rhode Island to keep a lid on with a staggering amount of people Dude. coming up. So props. Yeah, props um, to you guys and ladies out there. Because there was some kind of messy stuff going on there. And of course, New Year's means people are drinking and getting crazy. Yep. Because New Year's. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you for your hard work. Oh my goodness, seriously. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on Tech Thing. That's right, we will. We'll see you all next <laughs> week on Tech Thing. We are, yeah, so youtube.com slash tech thing. We will have short videos going up all during the week. We'll have two long videos that will feature our CES content. Yep. What are you bringing to CES to make life more tolerable in the land of no air and no cigarettes. Not sugar, because I'm off sugar this year. You've given up uh, sugar? Uh, uh.
I was wondering where your afternoon frappuccino went. I should have started this next month. Gosh, I'm going to CES next week and I can't get Here's... myself some frappuccinos or sugar while I'm there. They always give away free desserts at the press events. Maybe I'll let myself have Well, they give away free food at the press events. I know, but the desserts And are free the alcohol, part. which is like sugar. But Although one of my resolutions is limiting myself to two alcoholic beverages per event. You know, I limit myself Which to means... no alcoholic beverages per event, and I don't wake up naked in the wrong state. <laughs> Woo! Oh, well, I'm sober, <laughs> in case you didn't know, <laughs> for reasons. <laughs> I also don't end up in other states. But you're a responsible. You can have three <laughs> drinks and yeah. not end up in. in I don't, I, yeah, I'm a responsible. But it, it, I think it'll help me to better network and engage with people at events, and I think that will better my career. Because I'm not you know, sloshed drunk at the press events. <laughs> I've never seen you sloshed. I have seen the alcohol bounce. I've never oh, seen yeah. you sloshed drunk. Yeah, the alcohol bounce. It's highly amusing. <laughs>